Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Lea and this is my year-end December 2020 floss tube update, start of 2021. And it's already two weeks into January, but I finally found the time because I had so many videos planned to film this. And um, this is floss tube number 20, I think. This is a big one and I didn't plan on doing a whip parade but I changed my mind and do a whip parade anyways. I will show you my plans, my new starts that I already made and that I have planned um, just, just roughly, but I have 10 whips planned at least for this year. I don't know how that will turn out, but I already started four of those, so yay! <laughs> I'm always torn because I'm always like, oh, I need to work on my older projects. And then I think, oh, it's so much fun to see, to watch videos of people doing many different whips. And on and also for me, it's fun to have stitching variety and everything. So I don't know. But anyways, let me start with a little news update. So I found on a channel called Gentina Stitches, uh, I found R Renato Paroline Patterns and I didn't know of him before, it's an Italian designer. And I also saw that uh, Michelle Bendistici had de-stashed one of his patterns, she started it and it must have been the one video that I didn't watch in 2019 when she started it. But I love his patterns, so let me quickly show you an example. So what he does is um, are these, no. so he's mainly trees in all shapes and sizes and they're always like beautiful with many super tiny details. They're pretty big, I heard, but um, here he has many little birds in the trees and he always has that, you know, movement in the trees, which I love. So definitely going to stitch some of those. This one is also super cute. So he also has very, very colorful ones and he also has a Christmas one. There we go. So love this. New favorite designer. I will put the name down below in the Etsy shop. So you can check him out. Okay, back. I hope this is better now. I had to... It was a little bit too yellow for my taste. So let's move on. Then Pattern Keeper uh, rolled out an update last month. And um, so they support now paper pattern uploads. But I tried it with a Mirabilia pattern. That was not super great. And it really didn't work. So they will need a bit more time to improve that. You can test it out if you want. You just upload a picture. It has to be really nice of a paper pattern. And then you have to adjust the grid font forever so it fits with the pattern. And then you can mark. You can't search for symbols. It doesn't recognize symbols, but it like lays a like square grid. That's the word I was looking for. It's, it lays a grid on top of your photo that adjusts the photo so it's a regular, like, a really nice grid. All the squares are even and stuff. And then you can mark off and highlight in these patterns. So it didn't work for me yet, but I will try once they update it again. But you can check it out if you have a really nice, crisp, copy or photo of a pattern, then go for it and try it. So then I want to name quickly, quickly name some channels that I watched and uh, I just discovered. I will link all of them down below. So if you want to watch more after this video, you can check those out and go into the links. These are channels that I think might interest you because they have like many full coverage, many interesting cross-stitch designs. So I watched them a lot. Every one of those is linked down below in the description box. 
So let's start with the whip parade and my plans and everything. So in December I stitched 46 hours and that's less than I expected to be honest. Because I had lots of stitchy time, I took off half of the month to do YouTube and catch up with YouTube mainly. And I think I spent so much time on doing YouTube and cutting and filming videos that I actually didn't stitch. And the other problem is they that I'm in such a rut because of everything. And I think that's how many people feel when you don't go out you just it's just the sofa and youtube and that's it and it frustrates me a lot but that's just the situation so i didn't even have much energy to stitch much but anyways um so I, as you know i started magical stitches and whip go for this year whip go is just like kind of a side note for me just to help me with general plans and magical stitches is much more fun than I expected. You have um, challenges that I can make the whips that I want to stitch on fit very well or the whips that I should stitch on fit. So for example there are like 200 stitches that you have to do for a letter or word or a topic and so 200 is a pretty good stitching session for me it fits really well i can easily do that in one day or two if i'm busy and i can pretty much make my whips fit so i really enjoy it but just so you know i won't discuss the the challenges much uh, on this channel because I experienced it that I can't like you know it doesn't tell me anything if I'm not in the group so I won't talk about that much just maybe share my experience with the group how it pushes me or if it stresses me out or so far it's been pretty good much better than I expected okay now so still, I stitched 46 hours in December. Um, I have to add to that, I started three new things that I have to finish in January and I don't track the time for them. So I spent a good amount of time stitching on those because there will be gifts. Um, so what my experience from counting all my stitches is that I can achieve 1000 to 1500 in a normal week where I just have to work on a regular basis where maybe some evenings I have to work or I meet friends or family on the weekend so I can stitch then that uh, brings me to 1000 to 1500 stitches a week which is which made me reconsider my plans for this year because it actually isn't that much that I can do. But later more on that. Now for my stitch finale challenge where I stitch on every whip until the end of the year. I almost did it. Out of 11 whips I managed to do 6. No, 10. I managed to do 10. Okay. Um, so let me show you what I stitched in December. So let's start. Finally, we're on to showing the good stuff. Okay, this is my owl and I'm filming this video so I can react to it next year and see how my plans went because it was pretty fun to do that. Um, in a year I, um, I always forget what I planned, so yeah. So this is my Heaven and Earth Oh well, This is my first Heaven and Earth designs and it's 1 over 1 on 25 count, dark blue Lugana. And so this is a story key, Perfect Wisdom. I stitched 10 hours on it in December and I think I used it for a welcome guest challenge on magical stitches 
and what I did was I worked in some of the part threads in areas that I don't work at the moment. So up here I stitched. So I stitched up here and worked some some colors in and then I stitched down here because it gave me super quick stitches and that's another great thing about the challenge groups when it comes to counting large amounts of stitches I prefer to work on the background it goes quickly it gives me some bonus and usually I always skip the background I hate working on it and this made me really want to work on the background so that's a plus for the challenge group and then so I work down here and I put some stitches in here. So it must be like 10 squares that I worked in. I think I worked that one, that one and this part. And I also finally filled in the missing part up here completely. That was also thanks to magical stitches. We had just had to um, do a certain amount of stitches on one project. So there were several stitch counts you had to do and yeah, I finally filled in all of the background which makes me very happy. Um, yeah, so what I want to do is add two pages on this. I don't have, it's not super urgent for me to stitch and I know that I don't love, I like to stitch on it, I like how she turns out but I don't love it because of the dark fabric. And so I want to fill in, add two full pages down here on the owl at least. That's my goal for 2021. Let's see how that goes. Now in my year end video, you are seeing all of the comparison pictures of what it looked like at the start of the year and how it looks, looks like now if you want to compare that. And um, so the second whip I worked on was the castle and I really had a pretty big pause on this. I can't remember when the last time was I stitched on it but I still really love it. I enjoy the process. I enjoy the colors. It's a color conversion done by me. And um, yeah, so I filled, I worked on this five hours. And in that time I filled in that part. I think these two parts of the wing and I filled in some of the fluff stuff in here. And so, yeah, that's my progress on that. And this also was for a stitching challenge, which I double dipped with my stitch finale. And so, yeah, I my plan, I don't have plans for this. It's just whenever I want to stitch on it. I don't have many projects that I have like really big plans on it. I just want to make progress and I want to focus on the plan so on the core pieces that I want to finish yeah I also take pictures more regularly regularly thanks to the challenges so that next video I can put up comparison pictures again of what I did in the month so third whip is Luna Witch by Autumn Lane Stitchery and this is how far I got and I also used it for a challenge because I'm really having trouble to stitch on in one color it's so difficult for me but I love the pattern but that's why I skip mm, skip many patterns that are have just like one color I know it's faster it's so much faster but oh, but this is really great for the stitching challenges. So I think this this project will benefit a lot from the stitchy challenges. And I will try to use it a lot on the stitchy challenges as well. So what I did was I filled in all this and the start of the column or it's like the, I don't know, 
wherever she's standing. I'm still missing the colors. I still didn't find like a perfect match for my fabric for the background. I mean, it was super easy. I'm, I'm changing the colors in this and it was easy to change the colors in Photoshop, but I don't have a full color chart of DMC at hand. So I have to guess and um, guess which colors fit because I want the background trees to be like a bluish greenish gray green that fits the fabric. And the fabric is a very difficult color. It's also a like a greenish gray with some hints of yellow or gold in it. So it's a bit difficult to find a color that matches, but I will figure it out. And so yeah, that's my progress on that. And my goal actually for this is to finish it this year in 2021. I think I can do it because I will start another Autumn Lane stitchery and it will be big, but more on that later. So this is Luna Witch. It's 16 count Ada by x Design, but I don't remember the name. Okay, next one. I'm trying to not create a super big mess. Next whip is number, so this is the fourth whip in this video. Dimensions Angel. I worked, oh, I worked five hours on Luna Witch. I also worked five hours on the Angel. And this is pretty much my goodbye to this whip. So don't worry, I won't scrap it, but I will pause it for this year. It's not like I won't touch it this year, but I don't consider it an active whip that I have to think about, like, oh, I should stitch on her this year. I'm trying to pause it. I think I could, if I like really don't stitch on her for a year, that's what I did with my Zelda, is pausing it for a year and when you pick it up again, it's like a newer project that um, becomes more interesting again. So this is an old whip from like 2008 that I restarted it because my stitching was horrifying. <laughs> and um, I restarted it on 18 count Ada and I enjoy it but it's a lot of browns and it's just such an old project that I'm not you know I find so many new things that I want to finish and this is something old that's pretty but it's still you know it's an old project so yeah I stitched five hours I think I filled in some of the half stitches up here and down here and um yeah, so this will be paused. I have no um, goals for this for this year and I will just not put it in my whip bin. I will put it back to... I have another box where I keep my kitted project. So I will put her there. And then whip number... Five? Yeah, whip number five. I sorted them, pre-sorted them, so I'm very proud of myself, was Snow White. Just for the end of year challenge, I stitched on her and I already stitched on her in January for Magical Stitches. I think I put another like 200 stitches or more, I think it's even more in her. And... Um, so I added the sky and I added lots of the castle and I love how it turns out. And you know, it's not my favorite to stitch on 18 count and there are some weeks where I put it down after a few hours and I'm like, oh, I hate this. But last time I stitched on it, I was really happy to have a different, like full covered stitching different from one over one on super tiny fabric. So yeah, I actually enjoy it. I think I will always have a full coverage around that is not super tiny, just so I think for me, the feel of the project is always so different with 
the fab with different fabrics that's why i like to rotate so much and it's by the way it's so funny in germany when you post about having many whips in a cross stitch group so many people like clutch their pearls and are like what why the hell would you do that and not stitch on only one you will never finish anything what the hell is wrong with you <laughs> it's so hilarious you know they're not mean but i always love to talk about how many whips i have because there are always like a few people in the comments that are like what in the world <laughs> it's so funny but yeah i just love the variety that you have with all the fabrics and I get triggered by YouTube videos. So actually, when I picked this up for Magical Stitches, I just saw a thumbnail of someone that stitched a full coverage on 18 count. And I was like, ooh, that looks good. I have to stitch on my 18 count project. <laughs> That's how my brain works. So I know when I really need to light the fire for a certain type of project, I go to certain channels that I know have like similar fabrics or similar projects and watching them stitch or showing the project makes me really want to stitch on like the matching kind of things. That's why I'm always looking for channels that have many heaven and earth designs because it always makes me want to work on my big full coverage pieces. It's so funny. I think I wouldn't be such a crazy stitcher if it wasn't for a floss tube. I'm dead serious right now. <laughs> so this is, um, by the way, this is my Snow White. This is my Gothic Snow White. It's by Ennis Guerrero and charted by Thread Geeks. Okay, last project I've worked on in December is my Murky Manor. And I have another, my, I will show my new starts at the end of the video. So Murky Manor didn't get any love, didn't get any work. I'm sad, but I really, I couldn't bring myself to stitching on this. You know, I'm so, I love it, but I'm so done with it at the same time. And it's so funny because um, Amy from Creativity by Gage all, uh, stitches on the dimensions magnificent wizard and it's just the, th the same thing and every time she explains how she's feeling about the project and how she worked so much on it and you know it's great but uh she just wants to get it done because it's so old and i'm like yeah i know that feeling sis <laughs> so yeah here it is um i actually worked a lot on this this year I was very surprised when I made my year year end video it's this is too light let me put that light away when I worked on my year end video my reaction video I I think at the beginning of the year I or I already forgot i just filmed it last week and i already forgot but i think i only had stitched this part of the front yard and all of the rest i frogged and restitched this year so i'm pretty happy with it my goal was to finish it but i think i made some really nice progress and you know i like how it looks i mean it's still nothing I would buy today. I think I'm saying, telling this every video, but you know, it's just fun with the outlines. Like it's a bit of a comic style. And yeah, so all that's left is the yard here. There's a bat or two up here. There's a ghost up here and I have to finish the roof. And I worked on the roof for Magical Stitches. I started the roof. Um, in January, I think I will show this to you again in my January update. I'm pretty sure I will forget what I told you last time, but maybe you forgot also, so it's no big deal. And I also stitched foot stitches into the moon. I think it was 200 as well. So I caught up with my... This is the first project I worked on 
this year in January and so I caught up with my stitch finale. I was just a little bit late. I can't wait to finish this. This will be a finish for sure. I will try to squeeze this into lots and lots of challenges after I get my gifts done. So here we go. That went pretty well. Okay. And I actually don't have a big mess around me. Okay, so now on to the plans for the projects I showed you last time. First, of course, Gamer. My project that is always giving me headaches. Like, not really, but, you know, it's my, you know, I had so, such big plans for it this year, but just life went the other way. You saw how far I was last time. Um, initially, I wanted to try and go for 50% finish of in the, in 2021. So... Which means I would stitch this and another full column, which is madness. It's madness. I think it's even more than a full column. So I would have to stitch a thousand stitches every single week. No pause on this to achieve that. And that's just not happening. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to do this as a, you know, full coverage, um, they have a full coverage like focus piece. I try to fit it in every, um, in a lot. I mean, you know, you see the problem with all my whips that I want to finish. It's when I'm saying I want to fit it into every challenge. Um, yeah, I can't fit, fit every whip into every challenge. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to focus on this. Um, so I went away from the 50% goal and more onto like 4,000 stitches a month maybe. That would mean for like 1,000 stitches a week. I already didn't achieve that. I didn't stitch on it in the first week of the month. and But I can still catch that up. So that's my goal for next year. That will make 4,500 stitches a year. That would make like the column and like one page, I think, around that. That would be pretty nice. That would make this whip to go down to five years. And you know, I have so many geckos coming. There will be a new release of a Dracula by Medusa Dollmaker soon, so stay tuned for that. I will probably order this in January. No, in June. Because I will stay in the gold club, because I have to save up for the Dracula now. <laughs> I just can't. The Dracula will be 200 of pounds plus, I think. So I have, to, I just can't throw out 200 bucks in a month. So I will pay, I have to pay. I will stand the gold club and save up for this with another voucher. That's for Gamer. I always spend too much time talking about Gamer. Next. But you love it, I think. I always hear from you guys that you love it and everyone is super excited about Gamer. So I hope it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, next one is Zelda. And I have big plans for Zelda as well. So this is my second biggest focus piece for the year. I want to do five pages. So one page is the size on this pattern. It's much smaller than Heaven and Earth pages. And I see I have to restitch something here. So... I won't count these with this chat with this goal because they are started so I want to stitch like I think there's only one page missing and a little bit so maybe I will combine those and say one page two pages 
and then start three, four and five and maybe even finish the whole second row of this piece. That would um, bring me to more than 50%, I think. The pattern sadly doesn't fit into Pattern Keeper. The, this size is not available anywhere anymore and I can't share the pattern. I'm sorry. So, sorry, can't help you with that. And there's always someone under every, every video, video asking for that. That's why I'm putting this disclaimer out. So that's what's still missing. That's the top. And I would finish this, the pages until here. And then I only have the middle part left and the bottom is already done. And I really fell back in love with this piece. So yeah, and that's where I am at with Zelda. And you will see if I can do the five pages or maybe even two rows. Okay, so next one is, let me see, next one is, oh, okay, this is another sad one. So, I probably already mentioned it, but I will stop working on this, on the owl by Heaven and Earth Design. It's a retired, it's called Witching Hour, and you know, it's that one with the pumpkin with the witch hat on uh, top. And I'm sad, but I have to stop it. This is after like 28 hours of work that went in here. It's 10 stitch, it's my, it's my first big 10 stitch project. And my mistake was to be cheap and buy a China fabric. It only saved me like five bucks, but in my mind I was like, or oh, even less, I think. It saved me like three bucks. And it's horrible, stiff, and the, you know, the problem is that when confetti hits, like in the owl here, and I love how the owl looks, oh my god, I love it. When, but when confetti hits, it gets so stiff, I can't push my needle through for the life of me. And I hate working on it. I remember starting to love it when I was in the background, but now it's just horrible. So I scrapped this. I will restart it on 25 count, one over one. But the frustration is real, you guys. So... um. I will just start it whenever it hits me. It's like an inactive, ready to start whip now. No, not whip project. Um, I will salvage the part thread, uh, threads as best as I can. And I think I still have enough floss. That's not a problem. And I have the fabric, so I can start restart it anytime, but it's not an active whip anymore. So that's for that. And I still worked five hours on it, I think, before I decided to restart it. So that brings my whip count a little bit down. I think I was paused it maybe this year and restart it next year. Um, we'll see. But um, yeah, I learned my lesson. I will toss this fabric and... I already started another Heaven and Earth design on 28 count Lugana, like, it's not Lugana, I think, 28 count, but it's from, you know, Zweigart, and it's super soft, and the stitching is much nicer and much better and much more fun. I still prefer one over one, but, you know, I want to get done all the projects done, so I have to try and do some with 10 stitch, with, which is a little bit faster, especially when you have pictures that have lots of background and very little confetti, then, you, then you're then you good. Okay, that's, that's for that one. Um, <clears throat> then I will have my, yeah, I have my Mirabilia and I only work, oh no, that was dumb. Anyways, this is my Mirabilia, and as you see, can see, I have lots of progress, but that's not because I stitched so much on it in December. <laughs> this is another, thank you, Magical Stitches, 
because I used it for several Magical Stitches um, challenges. And I think I told you in my last video, but they are... You have to put much more stitches into these than you expect. So, so I think I have 600 stitches just on those leaves and it looks like nothing. It, look, it looks like something you can do like in an hour on a Sunday, just sit an hour and you're good and you have all the leaves done. Oh no, oh no you don't. <clears throat> so those are more than 600 stitches, which made me accomplish three challenges of 200 stitches. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. And, you, and I still have to bead all the brown leaves and everything, but backstitch is almost done on here. I love working on it, don't get me wrong. It's awesome. I have the new Kranich, which works much better than the one I chose first because there's no... I, I used a bad um, conversion uh, list online and they recommended the wrong color but now I have the correct Petit Treasure Braid color and I love it. I there we go, Mirabilia. This is my January progress. I think in December I only worked a little bit on her dress and yeah, that's it. So my goal for this is of course finish her and I want to maybe start another mirror as a replacement right away. Or I would work on my shadow lane until the shadow lane is done and then start a new Mirabilia in her place. That's what I want to do maybe because I still want to keep my category. So I want to, you know, just go with the full coverages and just have like, with full coverage, I just want to have like one project that I'm working on, like Gamer. That I want to have as a focus piece and all the other ones are just for fun. They're, I don't care, I don't count, I don't calculate, I don't care if I need like 10 years for them. They're just for fun. Of course I want to finish them eventually, but I just need the variety. I just need it to keep going and that's what these are for. But with the other projects, with the like with the Mirabilias, I really want to keep the whip count down. So that's what I'm thinking with her. But so my plan 2021 finish Mirabilia Cathedral Woods Goddess. She stitched on 32 count Murano hand dyed by Chromatic Alchemy and um, 2 over 1 full cross. There we go. If you want to see how the projects look finished, go watch my 2020 parade or my, like the other one that I just uploaded last week or watch some of my older videos. I show them, usually show the pieces how they will look in the end, but not this time because I don't want to edit. Because if I start editing now, I will never upload. I will never ever upload. Okay. So the last pro oh we're already done with all of my whips. The last project is my shadow lane and I showed the progress to you last time. This is my shadow lane. I love it. I still love it. But I'm t if I'm when I'm talking to people about the shadow lanes, they always say when they get big, it's really, really boring to stitch them because it's four times the same thing. In the beginning, it's so much fun. Like, now you only have the small size, but when it gets bigger, uh-oh. <laughs> but I will see about, about that. Finally, I have all the flosses so I can have it as an active and regular whip. I basically didn't stitch on this for the whole year because I had so many flosses missing that I needed on here. I really didn't want to, you know, just leave them out and count and take a risk that I might miscount with all the gaps in between. So no, no, no. That's why. But you saw in my last video that I stitched like 
five, six hours on this and I don't have a goal for it. I will have it like more as a focus piece after my mirabilia is done and have this take the mirror's place. Possibly. Probably. I think, yeah, I think that would be reasonable to do, but um, who knows if I go crazy and... As I said in the beginning, I have 10 new stars. 10. 10. It's crazy, right? I have 11 whips right now, so... I have 11 whips right now. And um, I'm retiring the Dimensions Angel and my 10 stitch project with the stripes in the background. So I have 9 active whips right now and I will start 10. So many, some of them are full coverage, some of them are small. Let me see. Now, I pushed all of my stuff on the ground. Um, okay, so let me first... This is my second start, or this is my new year, new start of 2021. I just have to get all the other things that I threw on the ground. Okay, I got it. So... This is um, Gypsy Firefly from Heaven and Earth Designs. <clears throat> I started this in on like the 31st of December, I think. And that's how far I've come. This is a lot. These are like 2000 stitches. Or even more. I think there are 2,200 stitches that are stitched on it. And um, it was just in the first or second week of... No, it's I, I stitched 2,000 in the first week. Yeah, in the first week of January, I think. And a little bit, a little bit on Sylvester. I think the first week of January was a bit... Was more like 10 days. Um, but yeah, this is 10 stitch on grey, um, Zweigert, like cotton fabric, you know, the regular Lugana stuff, just in 28 count. I forget what it's called, everything has its own name. And I cut the image to size, so I'm not stitching the whole pattern, because then I would never finish. But I think I will have a video out that explains what I did. And um, I just took Pattern Keeper and removed marked things around it as stitched that I think I don't need. And I'm pretty happy right now with how it turns out. It's like a handmade quick stitch <laughs> with Pattern Keeper. And yeah, so it's 10 stitch on 28 count. And it's hard to tell because there's not really confetti in here. But I already like it a lot better than on the Chinese fabric. It's so much softer. You know, it, you have more give in the stitches. You know, the fabric is more... It moves when you have to push through stitched areas with like one stitch. And the second tip that I have for you is when I stitched confetti, I had trouble like sewing in the two strands. So what I'm doing now, if I have a single stitch, I would just use one strand and, you know, make a half stitch twice with one strand. And then you only have to sew in the one strand. So that makes it much easier and much less bulky to do like a fake half stitch you just use one strand of floss and just do the half stitch twice and then it looks the same and um, yeah it's not as bulky but I love it the colors are so vibrant the colors are so vibrant and I still have to you know sew the edges but serge is it it's serge and, um, you know, that's from my last video, what I showed you with every project I make 
on the outside a line with for every 10 stitches like a grid but only on the outside so I don't miscalculate the fabric. I do this before I cut the fabric so I can be pretty sure that I don't mess up and it just helps me a lot with my peace of mind. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's my first of three new starts. Then the next are three different patterns but I'm considering them as one project because I want to have it done at the end of the month. It's a gift and um, I can't tell you what it is. I will put it on my Instagram once it's done and you will probably see it done, hopefully, see it done in my January update. So this is what I'm working on. This is one of the three this is number one. If you can guess it or if you guessed it from my recent Instagram um, post, write it in the comments. So that's the first one. Then I have this one. And I can tell you more about them when they're done and up on the wall and framed and finished and gifted because they will stay here at home. Um, this is number two. And there's a third one that's similar in size and style to her and they will go on the wall like that. So they will go, she will go here and that and that one, that other one. So those are the three new starts that are basically like one. So I have my four new starts done for the month. <clears throat> I'm pretty, I'm working on them pretty well, but it takes away time stitching from Gamer. It takes away time stitching from finishing Murky Manor or Zelda or anything, but I'm happy when they're done, but they're really, really fun to work on. Really fun. Um, okay, now, now for the highlights. The best is yet to come. Uh, I have to reach down here to, because I forgot to put those up. So first is my wizard. Scarlet Wizard, a kit by Dimensions, and uh, I will show you in my haul, I got the um, floss organizers for that, and I'm really happy about this, and I already, you know, I really wanted to kit this with, with you and do a kitting video, but I really don't have the time to film right now, so I have to kit it for myself, and I'm really sorry about that, but I, I'm really trying, but I just don't have the time to kit with you guys. Um, so that's one of the ten. That's number five. I mean, I just so I just count so I don't lose track. I don't plan to start them in any certain order. It's just when I feel like it, I just start it. Then I have Clouds Factory. The Star Trek sampler, big Star Trek, Trek fan, if you're to leave a comment and tell me about it. So there's the fabric. I will show you how I kit this or a little bit about it in my unboxing or in my haul part of this video. I just got all the flosses for it. So second thing ready to start. Then I have... I think I already filmed a plans video, but um, but it's so, but I didn't have time to film the actual cross stitch update that it's uh, again, it was two weeks ago and I don't remember and now I have to cut and see how it works out, how it makes sense. So if you see any repetitions in the next video that don't make sense, that you think, oh, well, she just explained that, that's why. It's been a while. 
These are the flosses, by the way, for the Gypsy Firefly, and I love it, I love it. And it's not completely killed yet, because I wanted to share that with you as well. But uh, I don't know if I can do that. I'm so sorry. Um, then... I have... These are part of the flosses of Contessa with Squid Mini. This is something I want to start real bad very, very soon. Um, love it. Michelle Bandy Stitchy is stitching the big one and I loved it from the first from the start, but she's way too big for me. So they just released the mini a few months ago, like two months ago maybe, or maybe it was even in December or late November or something like that, and I was like, okay, gotta have her. So I ordered all the CXC and I will stitch her one over one full cross and they also have the new colors of DMC in here. I got these with the order you were about to see in the next section of the video. Then I also finished kidding after the roses and but this is not in my I don't plan to start it but it's still a possibility. So after the roses with um fabric and floss and I'm still thinking maybe I should try it and get the fabric to be more red like in the picture but I also like maybe I try to dye it with like a reddish tea I don't know but the yellow like it's a like natural vanilla color could work as well and then finally this is also finally kitted um so these are extras. These are two just that I just finished kidding. They don't count in the 10. So I'm at 12 now. I have, I think I showed those to you. I have the fabric and the floss for the Three Night Spirit Studio. The Don't Summon Demons in the Bathroom, the bookmark and the coffin with all the little tiny trinkets and stuff in them. I got the black fabric. I got all the flosses. They're ready to start. And so they are three separate starts. So all of those are, I will start them as soon as I have the time. They, are, they have priority because they're tiny projects that I can easily finish. So I'm at 12 kitted projects now. And I ha also have You Had Me at Flamingo by... Uh, you know what I mean. I will show this next time. I will get all the supplies for the quilting bee and I will do a crazy color conversion on that. So that makes like 14. And then I have... And then the f first I will start when I have the fabric is the Dark Queen of the Sea Cell by Autumn Lane Stitchery. This will become an active whip, so I will have like over 20 whips at the end of the year or in the within the year. Easy. I just... It's Amy's fault. <laughs> it was Amy! <laughs> she just said, uh, you know, she just doesn't care. Just have fun and start everything. And I was like, oh yeah, whatever. I have this stuff. I have so much partially kitted. If I don't do it now, it will just be in the closet and I will never look at it again if I just don't start all the things. So that's what I did. I just picked out all of my favorite things and I just kitted them all. And um, you know, we're, we'll all be having loads of fun on here. I don't want to sound defensive. I'm not. It's just, it's just, I don't know. I think it's pretty funny to go crazy and it's entertaining. Whatever. Um, so yeah, I hope you had fun, you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Now to the big and awesome haul that I'm showing you now.